Uh, we're going to be in, in uh, Colossians chapter 2. You may want to go there. But uh, as we're turning there, I just wanted to say, um, last Tuesday we had a special live stream. We called it Tuesday Testimony. And our brother Aaron Evans uh, gave his testimony about his ordeal of having Crohn's disease and being in the hospital for almost five weeks, how God was faithful to minister to him. And I thought it was a great night. For, thank you for those of you that joined us. It was really special. And also yesterday, uh, we had an opportunity to have a, a wedding here, uh, a very small wedding, but our, our brother Joe Leary and his girlfriend, now wife, Aleda, were married. Uh, Joe and Leda were involved in New Brothers Fellowship with Pastor Doug and Caroline uh, for many years. So it was a day of rejoicing in the sanctuary when these two finally said yes to the Lord. And uh, it was a beautiful ceremony. Also, um, on Friday night and Saturday night, last night, uh, Harvest Hill Ministries was here. They're the Spanish congregation that's using our facilities every Sunday afternoon and Thursday night, but they were here Friday and Saturday. And uh, when I came in here earlier this morning, I have to tell you, I sensed the presence of God in this place. They were worshiping for a long time, and I just felt the afterglow of that worship time. So praise the Lord. Okay, so Colossians uh, chapter 2. We're starting at verse number 8. Now, I had to make a decision regarding this passage. If, if you're new or you're not aware of what we're doing, we're going through the book of Colossians verse by verse, section by section. So if you're here today and, and I'm preaching on something that's going to hit you, uh, it's not by my design, but maybe the Lord had something in store. We're just preaching what the Word says at this point. But I had to make a decision. I was going to go from verse 8 to verse 17, but then I figured if I did that, we'd probably, probably be here until about 9 o'clock tonight, and I know you have to go home to eat and all that stuff. But, so we're going to just go through 8, 9, and 10 this morning. And uh, I've entitled the message Complete with an exclamation point. Um, so I hope that uh, so far, as we go through this book, that, that you all are learning something. Now, that's the point. Um, I've always enjoyed uh, preachers and pastors that would go through books of the Bible verse by verse. And wherever they happen to be at that point, I got something out of it. So I hope that you've gotten something out of it. I hope that last week's message was helpful for you because last week we looked at verses 1 through 7, Colossians 2, and the title of that sermon was Making Progress, hmm, with an exclamation point. And I wonder if you're making progress. I wonder, there was one part of this sermon last week when I said, I, I really want to encourage you, when you come into the house of the Lord, come prayed up. You know, Sunday morning service begins on Saturday night when you get yourself together spiritually, mentally, emotionally to come into the house of the Lord. I think maybe many of you did come in today ready to worship God. I sense the Lord's presence right off the bat. But today we're, we're talking about uh, focusing on verse number 10. It says you are complete in him. It's all because of Jesus. It's all because of what Christ has done that we could say we're complete because we're complete in him. We're not just complete, we're complete in him. So let me read verses 8, 9, and 10, just a couple of verses, then we'll pray, and then we'll get into the message. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is head of all principality and power. Father, Lord God, thank you. Thank you for everything so far today, Lord. Thank you for our worship time, our prayer time. Thank you for the divine interruption of your Holy Spirit speaking to us the way that he did. And Lord, now as we get into the word, we pray that your word will speak to us and, and hit us right where we are, meet us right where we are. Lord, you know, you know everyone's situation. You know everyone on live stream today. You know everyone who's going to be watching this during the week, later. But Lord, I, we pray you would speak to us through your word, a message that would have a great impact upon our lives and upon our stature as Christian people in this day. Holy Spirit, come. 
Speak through me, Lord. Help me to deliver this message the way you want. And Lord, we pray you will be glorified and pleased with the proclamation of your word. And your people will be edified. And Lord, if there's anybody that doesn't know you and hears this, we pray that they would be convicted and they would surrender their heart to you. And so we give it all to you now and pray for your touch to be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So the title of the message is Complete. Uh, I, I was thinking about this in a day when there's so much angst and consternation out in the world. It seems uh, so many people struggling, so many people with self-esteem issues, uh, so many people preoccupied with worry and anxiety and stress and feelings of unworthiness, feelings of uh, I'm not going to, I can't make it, I don't know what I'm going to do, feelings of being incomplete, like something's missing. I want to say that in Christ, we stand complete in him. That doesn't mean things are perfect. It doesn't mean everything's going to be taken care of like overnight. It means we stand fixed and in, in, in right standing with God. And as such, we can handle life that comes our way. Now, to the non-Christian, I would say the answer is you need Jesus. But to the Christian with similar issues, I would say the same answer. The answer for you is Jesus. Sometimes our mind has to catch up with where our spirit is. We, we may say things like, if I die, I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. That, that's not the problem. My problem is waking up tomorrow and dealing with Monday. But I want to tell you that whoever, whoever will listen to the word of God today, verse number 10, look in your own Bible. You are complete in him. Now, we may have to get that from into our spirit and internalize that, get it into our mind, but this is the truth, and let's agree with his word today, that we are complete in him. So we're gonna go through this uh, verse by verse, as we do, and uh, at the end, I'm gonna give you three principles if you want to enjoy your completeness in God. They're easy, but I, I would think that you would want, I want to, this message is speaking to me. I want to feel complete every day when I have the weight of the world on my shoulders, when I have, you know, <laughs> the bills are waiting for me or there's a need somewhere. I, I need to know I'm complete in Christ. And through Christ, I can do all things. So that, that's where I'm going. That's where we're going with this message. So uh, let, let's start with verse. Well, so three verses, uh, you know, I, I would say, how long could three verses take? But you know what? Sometimes it does take long. But verse number eight says, beware, beware. And of course, we're, Paul is continuing with his, uh, you know, writings from chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. He's saying, beware, like there's some in, impending doom ahead if you don't take care of what I'm about to tell you. And so last week we talked about making progress, you know, in the Lord. Making progress, getting involved in church and having spiritual leadership and being knit together in love and be, being committed to, to growing, to grow your own faith and develop as a person. And now he's saying beware because there are forces or there are things or there's philosophies that will try to cheat you out of what God has for you. There's other voices that could sidetrack or shipwreck your faith. Beware means to look out. This is how you can make progress. Actually, this is how you could avoid being sabotaged in your faith. Don't let anyone cheat you, he says. Protect what you have. There's philosophies, deceptions, traditions, worldly ways and ideas that you don't need. Be careful. Protect your faith. Protect your mind. And don't be cheated. Because there's forces that want to steal what we have. And I would just say there may be somebody, maybe somebody here, maybe somebody at home that didn't make it. But there may be some people that even this morning, there were voices that were saying to you, you don't need to go to the house of the Lord today. There's voices. There's, there's a philosophy of the world. You may have read it somewhere, you know. But there's a, there's a, tr a tradition of the world that says we don't need God. And, and what Paul is saying here is beware of those voices. Beware of those writings or those philosophies or those even false religions. 1 John 2, John said something very similar. 1 John 2. He said, don't love the world 
Don't love the things of the world. If you love those things, the love of the Father is not in you. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And 1 John 3 says that Jesus Christ has come to overcome the devil, to overcome the world. So he's saying in verse number 8, beware, uh, take heed, pay attention, there's dangers ahead. Now I haven't seen a pack of cigarettes in a long time, so don't, if you have one, don't show me. But I've, I've read that on the, on the pack of, a cigarette, on pack of c- cigarettes, there's a stern warning that cigarette smoking may or will, I don't know, cause lung cancer. That's a stern warning. Just like in, there's some movies that you look at, like if you, if you study the movie guides, there's warnings, there's crude language, there's sexual scenes, there's violence. And so there's warnings really all around us. But here's a warning from Paul to take care of your faith because there's forces out there that want to that wanna cripple your faith. And don't get cheated by what Jesus has for you. When I hear that, like, my, I, I'm using New King James, beware lest anyone cheat you. When I, when I think someone's cheating me, I get, I get upset. I don't know if I get in the flesh, but don't cheat me. Come on. <laughs> don't steal that from me. You know, I, I, get, I get upset. Like, and I don't want anyone or anything to cheat or steal what I have. So there's philosophies, empty deceit, According to, or coming from, or steeped in the traditions of men, the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Beware of the reasoning and the functioning that says you can make it independently without God, without the Word, and without the church. And you might say, why, why am I saying this? You know what? That, that philosophy is all over the place. If you read anything, if you just look at our culture, there's voices that always say, you don't need God. You definitely don't need the Bible. And you don't need the church. The church is all corrupt anyway. You don't need any of that stuff. The Full Life Study Bible, and I'm going to talk about this, one of my study materials, says that this threat today is summed up in the phrase or in the term secular humanism. You ever hear of it? Secular humanism. Basically, it means you can make it without God. And I want to talk about this for a minute. Uh, here, here's a definition that Full Life Bible Studies gives regarding secular humanism. It's an underlying philosophy and accepted religion in most secular education, government, and in society in general. And it is the established viewpoint of most news and entertainment media outlets throughout the world. You ever notice that the secular media is always opposed to some of the basic things in the Word of God? That's why. That's secular humanism. We see it in our public schools. We see it in our government. We see it all over the place. But they give eight characteristics of secular humanism, and I just want to go through it quickly so you know where this is going. The first one is the secular humanists, humanists say that man and the universe consist only of matter and energy and exist by impersonal chance. Like, boom, one day everything happened. That man and life originated by chance. We call it evolution. They call it evolution. Secular humanists reject the existence of God and the written word of God. Can you imagine? Even before I was born again, I had a respect for the Word of God. But now, you, there's not even that in many circles. Number four is the uh, knowledge comes only from man's reasoning. Sounds like the Gnostics, their reasoning, their knowledge. It says, uh, improvement comes only by learning. The more you know, the better off you're going to be. Well, we have some very... And I'm all for education, believe me when I say, but we have some very educated people that are so lost and so far away from God. Uh, Number six, the moral moral standards are relative. They change with time and place. Whatever makes one happy is what's morally important. So that opens up a whole can of worms in many different ways. The highest good in in life is man's self-fulfillment. And people should learn to cope with life and death without God. 
Sounds like Gnosticism to me. But that's the, that's the overriding philosophy in which we live and function. Do you realize we were delivered out of that into this? We came out of that lifestyle, that mindset, that explained away everything like, oh well, and now we're living by the word of God. The two are totally different. I think it probably started in Genesis chapter 3 when Satan said to Eve, did God really say that? Did he really mean that? Your eyes will be open if you listen to me instead of him. Romans 1.24 is another example of what I would call some type of secular humanism, but it says they exchanged the truth of God for the lie. They worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. So verse number eight, Colossians 2, verse number eight, Paul saying to the church there and the Holy Spirit saying to us, beware, church. Don't let anyone cheat you or steal the life and love that you have in your heart that comes only from God. There's the world and there's Christ. There's man's way and there's God's way. There's the old man and the new man. There's darkness and their light. Amen. I wanted to read this passage from the message translation. Everyone ever read the message? I don't read it all the time, but sometimes it's kind of colorful. But this is Colossians 2, 8 through 10. Listen to what it says. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope <clears throat> to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you, too. His power extends over everything. I just want to repeat that part. We don't need a telescope to search the skies for the answers. We don't need a microscope to go through biology and human cells to find an answer. We don't need a horoscope to look for the stars. We have Jesus, who is the author and finisher of life. Do you hear the voice of the Lord today? Most of us come out of this world, this mindset. Uh, for instance, like most of us probably grew up with this type of mentality, maybe in our homes or families, but a uh, little lie never hurt anybody. Curse words, what's the big deal? Cheating on your spouse, eh, just don't get caught. Watch porn, not going to hurt you, which is a lie. But sometimes we Christians carry that mindset into our walk with God. What I mean is may, maybe not those things, but maybe things like, well, maybe I really don't have to go to church. Maybe I don't need to pray every day. That Pastor Rick, he's always bugging us to pray every morning. I don't need to listen to him anymore. I'm going to do it my way. I'm still a Christian, though. I don't want to have, <laughs> I don't want to have fellowship those people, I don't need that. Now they want my money? You see, there's voices. The old man says, no way, I'm not doing all that stuff. The new man says, absolutely, sign me up, I'm going for it. Whatever it takes to maintain my salvation and make it to glory, I'm going to do it. And if the, if the Lord established the church for that reason, guess what? I'm plugging in. I'm all in to the church. I say this all the time. If I wasn't here preaching, I'd be somewhere in church today. That's my wife. She'll tell you. I have to be in with the body of Christ. I have to. I realize the value and the importance of it. So verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world. You know, when we got saved, there were things in my mind I didn't even know they were wrong until I started to get, read the Word of God and realize, wow, we thought that? That's not what this says. But there's things that we have we, don't, we may not even realize because we were raised that way. But they're principles of the world, not according to Christ. Verse number 9 is the clincher. For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. So in other words, why do we need any philosophy in the world 
Why do we need the traditions of men when we have Jesus who has all the fullness of God in him in bodily form? We don't need the worldly philosophies. We don't need the traditions of men. We have Jesus. We have God in the flesh. Now just look back in chapter 1. We did this a few weeks ago. Chapter 1, verse 15. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Verse number 19. It pleased the Father that in him, in Jesus, all the fullness should dwell. And then verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 9. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let me read a, a short passage of scripture from Philippians chapter 2. And in this passage, Paul is teaching the church how they should think and, and how they should live. But as he's telling them how they should think and live, he's proclaiming doctrine to them and for us. He says in verse number, uh, Philippians 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. So now he's going to say, he's going to tell them what, what the mind of Christ was like. But let that mind be in you, so you could be a successful, powerful Christian person in your life. So he's telling them how to be, but he's proclaiming who Jesus is. He says, Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God. He was equal to God. He was God. But he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the one. In him dwells all the fullness. You know, he's the babe in the manger, right? He's, he's Emmanuel, God with us. If you know the Gospels, Jesus wept. He, he, he felt. He experienced pain and discomfort. He carried burdens. He probably laughed, although it doesn't say that, but I think he probably did, don't you? But it also says, in, for instance, in Luke's Gospel, that as Jesus was praying one day on the mount, his face was altered. His clothes became white and glistening as he began to speak with Moses and Elijah. This is God in the flesh. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they proclaim it loud and clear. The angel, he's not here, he is risen. He's alive today. And he appeared to many. Acts 1, 8 and 9, it says Jesus was raised up in bodily form, carried into the heavens by two angels and took him away into glory. So in verse number nine, we're reading, uh, in, in, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Here's what I want to get to here. If we're in Christ, and in Christ is all the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form, guess what? If we're in that, we're blessed. We're complete in him because of what he has done for us. Amen. So verse number nine, Jesus displayed both qualities of God and man while on earth. Now he's in glory. When he comes again at the next appearance, guess what? He's not coming as a lamb to be slain. He's coming as a lion to execute justice over all the earth. So verses eight and nine, beware. Just to paraphrase, Jesus is enough for you. Guard your heart, guard your mind, guard your soul. Filter the news. Filter social media. Can I just tell you something? For the most part, it's polluted and tainted and enticing. And I don't know if I read this or I just feel it in my heart. There seems to be a hidden agenda in most media and most social media. That there's a, the, the, uh, the agenda is to pull you away from what's solid and clean and bring you down to a gutter bring you to the lowest form of a person that you could be. I, I, I'm amazed by the, the, the news articles and the, the way it's set up. This is what troubles me. You could be reading about Ukraine and Russia and China and, and uh, North Korea, and all of a sudden you're, you see an article about someone who just divorced, some celebrity. They just posed naked in some magazine. What does that have to do with news? 
But you see, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a plot. All you want to do is get the news. And you heard about people's getting divorced and people running around and who's cheating on who. Who cares? Why is that in my news? I don't want that. That's not my news. But it's a, it's a conspiracy, I think. I'm just saying. There's a philosophy of the world. Someone makes these decisions. TV shows, thankfully we don't watch hardly any. But uh, movies, man, there's an agenda. There has to be an agenda. The agenda is, who cares about God? It's all about your flesh. That's the philosophy of this world. And Paul is saying, hey, you know what? Beware. Oh, you may think it's innocent, but you know what? No sin is innocent. It may start out kind of innocent. Or you, maybe. But sooner or later, it will eat you up and spit you out. The agenda is to kill you and to rob the joy of the Lord from your heart. We ever hear the saying, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. We are in the world. There's so many opinions on social media. Some of my, I start to listen to and I said, oh, I can't even deal with this. Sometimes I want to know what's going on just to be informed, but sometimes I say, man, oh, Lord, I don't, I don't need this. There's only one opinion that counts. It's God's opinion. Yes, amen. So, okay, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10. And you are complete in him. Now that's like a breath of fresh air right there to me. That's like, that's like someone saying, you know, beware of this, and don't do that, but, 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 but you're complete in him. You're okay. You're okay. You're, 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 the work of Calvary is enough for you. You're, 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 you're full. You're satisfied. You're repaired. You're, you're made right in Christ Jesus. Genesis chapter 2 we read the story of creation, and when God made Adam, he made a man out of, the, out of the earth. It said he breathed into his nostrils and gave him life. And you know, every single person that's been born since then has a place in their being for God. And until that need is met, that person is walking around functioning incomplete. But when we receive Christ, who came to redeem us, we are now complete in him. That, that spot for him has been satisfied through Christ. So verse number 10, you're complete in him uh, who is the head of all principality and power. Let me read you 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Now, now this is a little bit lengthy, but... Try to listen to this. Try to focus right here. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life. But Lord, I have to deal with somebody tomorrow. Oh, he, he's got you. But Lord, I don't have any money to pay this bill. He's got you. All things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Hmm. That through these, you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's telling me a whole lot right there. It's maybe too much for this right now, but what Peter is writing is that when you're in Christ, you're, you have a whole different experience going on. Now, if you get caught up and fall back into the ways of the world, yeah, there's going to be problems. It's hard to stay on this track. That's why Paul's saying beware. But if we could stay on that track, man, we are, we are such a blessed people. It goes on, verse number 10, you're complete in him who is the head of all principality and the head of all power, just to tie this up, the head of all principality in this case is, it means he's, he's the head of all the angelic beings around the world. 1 Corinthians 1 talks about the Lord of hosts. Samuel's mom and dad went to the, the, uh, the festival to honor the Lord of hosts. What host? The heavenly hosts, the angels. But if you look at chapter 2 and verse 15, 
He also disarmed principalities and powers and made a public spectacle of them. Those are the fallen powers. So this one who in him dwells all the all the uh, fullness of the Godhead in bodily form, and we're in him, he's the one that controls everything. He's the one that is the Lord of hosts of the, of the angelic beings and the one that conquered demons when he rose from the grave. Hallelujah. And he's the head of all power. That's why we pray, Jesus, we need your power. Jesus said in John 16, it's better that I go away, because when I go away, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. In Acts, he said, well, John baptized with water, but I'm going to baptize with fire not many days from, from here. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the outermost parts of the world. He's the head of all principality and power. So no wonder why we can say, and, and Paul says, and the Holy Spirit says, we're complete in him. How could we not be complete after all that he's done for us? So I want to give you three things real quickly here. Three principles that will help you enjoy and, and, uh, and, and stand complete in Christ. Ready for this? They're going to be easy. Easy to remember, too. The first one is this. Verse number eight. Look out. Look out. Beware. <laughs> Everything is not, all that glitters is not gold. John 10.10 10 says, uh, the thief has come, Satan has come to kill you, to rob you, to steal from you, to take from you. But I've come to give you life and give it abundantly. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be sober and be vigilant. Let me just think of the word sober. Here's a modern day translation. Don't get high on pot. Don't drink to get high. Don't get a buzz by gambling. Don't get a rush from looking at pornography. Be sober minded. Right? Think about it. Be, and be, be vigilant. You know, be, be steadfast. Because your adversary, the devil, is roaring around like a, like a lion, seeking whom he may devour, but withhold, withstand him. So I would say, look out. Look out for the things in the world. Like you, you may be hearing uh, in your circles, no one believes in marriage anymore. Everyone's sleeping around. You know what I would say to that? No, they're not. We had a wedding yesterday for crying out loud. <laughs> Everyone's not doing that. Amen. Some people might say, smoke a little weed. Everyone's smoking weed. Well, there's four marijuana distributors in Haverhill, I think. And a lot of people are smoking weed. But you know what? Every Christian is not smoking weed. It's not, they were not, we're not. I'm not. <laughs> Have a drink of alcohol. You know, it won't hurt you. I've seen, I've seen some terrible cases of alcohol abuse and drunkenness. It's not pretty. It's ugly. It's mean-spirited. It's demonic. My advice, don't even have the first one. Nah, nobody belongs to a church anymore. It's passe. Look out. Look out. Beware of that. Because there's many godly people that belong to a church all over the world. Nobody gets up early to pray anymore. Well, at our last count, I think we had 37. <laughs> And every now and then someone texts me at 5, 30, 6 o'clock, I'm praying with you. I say, oh, good. <laughs> I, I, I really do say good. I, I, I'm happy. I don't need to worship God. I, I worship nature. I worship trees. I'm, Jason and I met a guy at the gym last week. He worships Satan. He's a witch. There's people out there that will tell you things. You don't need this. We have that. No, no, no. You don't need that. You need this. I'm telling you, look out. Look out. Beware. Because there's philosophies and empty deceit, the traditions of men, the worldly way that will bring us down. And I don't want anyone to be brought down by those things. Here's number two. Ready? So number one is look out. 
Number two is, <laughs> look up. <laughs> look up. Verse number nine. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. See who Jesus really is. He's God in the flesh. He's God in the spirit. He's a soon coming king. He's the king of glory. He's Hosanna, Hosanna. He's the bright morning star. He is everything. He invites you and me to sit at his table. That's the God that we serve. Look up and see the Lord. In Matthew 11, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I'll give you peace. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and I'll give you rest for your souls. Who doesn't need rest for your soul? I'm the first one in line. My soul sometimes is hyperactive. <laughs> you know, I just need peace. I need come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Oh, I came to Jesus 10 years ago. Really? How about today? How about right now? How about in your time of need? We sang it. He's our ever-present help in time of need. Come to Jesus now. So when you have a fleeting thought or an angry thought or a whatever thought, bring it to God. Bring it to the Lord. Look up and see who Jesus really, really is. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says that God is faithful He's called us into fellowship with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you, church, in your moment of maybe desperation, look up to the Lord. Embrace him. Fellowship with him. Trust him. And not only that, but 1 Corinthians 4 says, he's coming soon, so you better start looking up. You don't want to miss him when he comes. He's coming soon. Keep looking up. And keep trusting the Holy Spirit to make your way through this life. All right. Here's number three. If you want to enjoy your completeness in Christ, you got to look, got to look out. You got to look up. And number three is you got to look in. See who you are in Christ. Don't listen to the old man. The old man's a liar. Don't listen to the old nature. Don't listen to friends or even family members that don't understand God is working on you and changing you from glory to glory. You know who you are in Christ. You know you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, you probably know the day and the time when that happened. Don't let somebody steal that from you. That's yours. That's your testimony. That's your story. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we say it all the time. But if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation in him. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Romans 5, 1 says, having been justified by faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I would encourage you, when you start to doubt yourself, or condemn yourself, or think that you're not worthy, or you're not good enough, let me just tell you, that's exactly why Jesus came for us. I'm on that list too, by the way. I always have to go back and see, who, who am I? Who am I in Christ? And I, you know, as, as much as I enjoy the, all my friends on Facebook, I have some friends from my past on Facebook, they don't have a clue who I am right now. In fact, I have a cousin. I hope, hope you're not listening. Maybe I have to edit. No, it's okay. But <laughs> my cousin called me up one day and said, I heard one of your sermons, and I said to myself, who is that guy? I said, it's your cousin. It's me. He goes, you changed. I said, you're right. I'm just saying, we, we have changed, and we have to stay changed. Don't let the lie of the enemy come into your heart or your mind and tell you you're not good enough. Jesus makes us all good enough. It's not our own labors. I would say, when you see your heart, see your heart covered with the blood of Jesus. I shared this a while ago. One time in my life, I was slain in the spirit, only once. Maybe you remember this story. And everyone says, what happened, what happened? You know what happened? I fell down, and, all I, and my eyes were closed. All I could see was red. I didn't see anything. I just saw the color red. I was down there for a little bit, and I got up, and 
just continued my life and my walk with the Lord. But I always thought back on that. I thought, what was that? I think the Lord was showing me I'm covered by the blood. And I needed to know that then. I need to know it now. And you need to know it now. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. See your heart covered in, in the blood of Christ. See your mind covered by the blood. See your past covered by the blood of Jesus. See yourself the way that God sees you. Redeemed, delivered, set free, new, forgiven, empowered. Amen. With a hope and a future, with, with direction and guidance. With a family that loves you and cares for you. So, so if we're going to if we're going to stand on verse number 10, we're complete in him. All these things come into play. We have to look out, look up, and look in. So in conclusion, are you feeling complete in Christ today? I hope that you are. If you're not, receive him today. If you're not sure, receive him today too. If you have received him and you're still not feeling complete, we got to pray for you. Let's stand together, can we? To be complete in Christ, you gotta, we have to look out for the dangers around us. We have to look up and see Jesus for who he is. we got to look in to see who we are in Christ. Let's read verses 9 and 10 together if we can. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Now, we're going to say it again. But it says, um, verse number 10, you. When we say that part, think that it's you. All right? Think that it's you. For, verse 9. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily for you. For I, I, I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Let's say it one more time. Instead of saying you, let's say I. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, I, I really enjoy the verse-by-verse -verse preaching because I didn't come up with this. God did. This wasn't my idea to say this. This is God's idea. This is God's word. And in that regard, it makes it relatively not easy, but it's easier when you proclaim God's word instead of my own thoughts. And I can tell you you're complete, but if I don't have the backing of the word, it's just a word that you're hearing. Every head bowed for just a moment. Isaiah 53 Great chapter about the Messiah, but it begins by saying, whose report will you believe? And that's the question today. Whose report will you believe? You believe the, the report of, these, uh, of the news media or secular media or social media that says, you know, you don't need all this. You don't need God. You know, you're a God unto yourself and blah, blah, blah. Or are you going to believe the report of the Lord? And that's what it comes down to today. So anyone on live stream, this, this is for you as well. Whose report will you believe today? So here's my first question and for, at, on live stream or here in the house. Is there anyone here today that feels like, man, I, I got to receive Jesus today. I don't, I'm, not, I'm definitely not complete. My life is a mess or my life is troubled. My life is whatever. I want to be complete, but I, I need Jesus. Anyone like that? I see one hand over here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. All right. Very good. Thank you back there. Very good. All right. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask those, those four people if you would see me afterwards real quick for a minute. That would be great. Um, here's another question. We're going to pray in just a minute. But how many of you have received Christ, but you're still not feeling so complete? And, and there's troubles. There's troubles in your life. Well, that's OK. I mean, we all have troubles. But maybe there's a, a time for a recommitment, a, a, a re-upping of your faith in the Lord. I wonder if there's anyone here that feels like, I want to renew my walk with God today. Yes, I see one hand. Anybody else? I want to renew it. I don't want to face the rest of this day 
lackadaisically or tomorrow, forget it, tomorrow. No, I need to get right today for tomorrow. And I wonder, thirdly, how many people just need prayer? Just prayer. Yeah, a lot of us, most of us. All right. <laughs> the Lord loves those hands, by the way. You think pastors love those hands? The Lord loves them a million times more. So let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we come before you today in the name and authority of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is a good day in your house. I feel like we've been on, on a little bit like an operating room and you've done some surgery. And uh, you're, you're cutting up our spirit and you're dissecting us a little bit. You're exposing us. But Lord, I do want to pray for anyone that raised their hand about receiving you. Uh, Lord, we pray in agreement. We're all sinners. We all need you, Lord. We all need Christ. We confess our sins before you. We open our heart to receive you as our personal Lord and Savior. And Lord, we believe in you. We believe in Calvary. We believe in the empty tomb. We believe that you're coming back again. But Lord, we, we make a profession of faith that, that uh, we love you. We need you. We want you in our lives. Come into our lives, Lord. Establish your kingdom deep in our hearts today. And Lord, for some of us, uh, maybe we said that prayer a long time ago, but we've had a rocky road lately. We're kind of up and down and we feel uncertain. So Lord, we're going to just make a recommitment to you, Lord, in spite of what's happening, in spite of how I, we may feel or what lies ahead for tomorrow. Lord, we're going to put our faith in you right now. Your word says without faith, it's impossible to please you. So today, Lord, we're going to exercise faith and receive you as our Lord and Savior, and renew our commitment to you. And Lord, for the others that most of us here today raise their hand, we, we just need prayer for our situation. We're complete in you, but there's a lot of people around us that are incomplete and, and a lot of things going on in our lives that are uncertain. Lord, we just pray. I, I want to pray for everyone here, everyone on the live stream, Lord, that we would all sense your strength, as we put our faith and trust in you, Lord, meet us right where we are. Whatever the problem might be, whatever the situation might be, whatever the need might be, we sang it repeatedly before. Lord, you are our ever-present need in time of trouble. So we just pray for one another, Lord, that you would meet the needs that we have and that we would continue to stand complete. Even if our world around us is falling apart, we stand complete in Christ. So, Lord, may this be an act of your Holy Spirit. Give us the anointing that we need. We talked about the baptism in the Spirit. Father, we pray for a fresh baptism in your Holy Spirit among this church family. We pray, Lord, that we who are saved and walking with you, that we would receive power from on high to be a witness for you in spite of our circumstances. So, Lord, we pray that you're the head of all principality. Lord, defeat those demons. Release your angels. You're the head of all power. Lord, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Yes. So, Lord, let us walk in completeness, knowing that you have our back, you have our front, you have our head, you have our feet. We give you all praise and we give you all thanks. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen and amen. Well, our keyboard player is not here right now, so he's with Kids Church. How about the lyrics for that last song? Uh, not the last song, but Made Me Glad. We'll sing that. The chorus. <laughs> you are my shield, my strength, my portion. Deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help. You are my shield and my strength, my portion. Deliverer, my shelter, strong tower. My very present help in time of need. I don't know what key I'm in, brother. I'll go in your key. <laughs> Is that it? No, that's a miracle. 
<laughs> Let's sing it one more time, can we? You are. Yes, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to your name. My portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help in time of need. Yes, Lord. with oil. I'll pray for you. Uh, everyone else is dismissed and have fellowship in the coffee room there. Father, thank you for a beautiful day. We, we give you all of this. We pray that you would seal it with your spirit and allow your perfect will to be done through this word today. May your blessing be upon every person here, every family represented, every child that was here today. Bless the families in the name of Jesus. Bless those on the live stream. Let us have a good, safe day and week. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.